Okay guys, this is the final part of my final assignment in robot navigation. So I want you to meet Mohawk. Mohawk is my little robot that's been working with me this entire time. So Mohawk's job today is to go through an obstacle course, a small one, but an obstacle course. His goal is to get into his parking garage, and if he does that, he's going to do a victory dance. He's going to turn one way, turn another way, and then he's going to flash his purple light five times, signaling victory because that is his favorite color. But before he can do that, he's got to master the obstacle course. Now, if everything goes right, I taught him the way the obstacle course is. And if he knows what he's doing, he'll be able to complete it. So, he's going to go forward. He's going to sense the first obstacle. Then he's going to turn left. He's going to go forward again. He's going to sense the second obstacle. He's going to make a right-hand turn. He's going to go forward again. And then he's going to sense the third obstacle. He's going to make another right-hand turn. And he's going to go forward again. He's going to sense the last obstacle. He's going to make a left-hand turn. And then if he makes it into his garage, he'll stop. He'll rotate left, rotate right, maybe rotate left a little bit more, and then flash his light five times. All right, let's see if he can do it. Okay, Mohawk, it's all on you, dude. I got confidence in you, though. Let's see what you can do. All right. Gonna take him a minute to warm up. And there he goes. Okay, he sensed the first obstacle. Good. Second obstacle, good. Third obstacle, good. Fourth obstacle, good. Is he gonna make it? Is he going to make it? He made it. He made it into his garage. See the purple light? That's his garage. And he's doing his little victory dance. And he is flashing his light proudly. Two, three, four, five. Good job, Mohawk. I am so proud of you. Okay, guys, that is the end of my final. Thank you very much. And if you like what you see, give me an A. I think I deserve it. Anyway, bye-bye. Okay, guys. So let's let's dive into this a little bit here. Let's, let's show you how this robot I call Mohawk is wired up. Or at least what we're using to do the guidance on this robot. So the first thing that I want to show you is that we're using the ultrasonic distance sensor primarily for his sensory output and input. So, um, with the ultrasonic sensor, um, it's basically, it's, it's, in, it's on a shield, basically. But here's the pin diagram for that. So, we have 5 volts going into pin 1. We got ground going into pin 4. Uh, pin 12 and pin 13, that is your, basically, your send and your receive right there. Okay? Pretty simple. Um, 12 and 13 on the UNO is basically right on the money with an ultrasonic distance sensor. Those are the two pins that you're going to be using. <clears throat> okay. I do use the RGB. The RGB has a in and out in a voltage um, <clears throat> right here. It's going to run to pin four. What's really unique about this is that it's actually running the Adafruit NeoPixels on it. This RGB only has uh, <clears throat> it has a power you know it has a voltage in a voltage out or a ground I should say here's your voltage here's your ground but it only has one pin for the red green and blue it doesn't have three you know so what, what's really unique about this is the Adafruit NeoPixel library allows you to control a whole strand of these lights with just three pins so I thought it was amazing but for this robot he only has one pin on him or one one light so <clears throat> I guess it's a little overkill whatever <laughs> uh, we're not using a servo the switch well you know what it's a switch <laughs> it has the ground it has a power there's your power there's your ground yeah it works um, so we're not using a line tracking model. We're not using the servo. I'm not really using the UART. 
right now. Um, although I did use it, you know, to upload and download the program. Uh, the MPU 6050. Uh, no, we're not using it. That is your, um, that's your gyroscope and your, um, your accelerometer, basically. However, we are using this here, this TB6612. And this is your, um, this is your H-bridge. So the H-bridge is wired up a little differently. I guess like some people are. <laughs> so you have, you have your voltage in, all right, to the H-bridge. And you have a ground going out. This is also part of it right here, okay? However, the way this is controlled is it's split in two, like an H-bridge is. But, how can I explain this? So, the left side controls both motors at the same time. The right side controls both motors at the same time. Um, usually, you know, on some of these, you can, you can get differential controlling. Uh, but for this one you can't so basically we have a uh, AN is going to be for the left side B and is going to be for the right side so pin 7 and 8 on the Adreno okay and then you have and that'll control and then you have AN2 and BN2 so what happens is if AN1 and AN2 are both set to high the left motor is going to run forward. Same with B1 and B2. The right motor is going to be forward. If you put them in, if you put them zero, then they're going to be in reverse. Okay. Now you have a standby right here, which is pin three, which is basically going to supply power to these motors. Okay. If the standby is turned off, then uh, your motors aren't going to run. Now you also have uh, where is it at here? Um, oh yeah, um, one of these pins for the A and B is also for your pulse width modulation. You can control the speed of the motor using pulse pulse width modulation. Zero is going to be at a stop. Two fifty five is going to be full speed. I'm running it right around in the middle. And then I drop it down to a quarter when, when we're turning and stuff like that. Um, other than that, there's really not much more going on here. I'm not really using anything else. So um, we can get rid of this block diagram. However, we will dive into the code because the code is kind of unique. All right. So the code here basically uses the Adafruit NeoPixels header file. It's the library that I, I told you about. And that's about it for header files, you know. Um, we're using the ultrasonic distance sensor, so I have the trigger pin on 13 and the echo pin on 12. So basically, it's your send and receive, okay. Um, I have the LED on pin 4, and the number of LEDs we have is called num pixels, and we're only using one, okay. I have two integers, duration and distance, and they're going to help basically calculate how far the robot is and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Uh, we actually, this is kind of odd, but the Adafruit NeoPixels, um, this basically this function here um, is going to say how many pixels we're using, what pin we start off on, and then this here is going to say, you know, we're going to get the uh, green, red, and blue um, at this frequency so it's running at a frequency I don't know I have to dive a little bit more into it but that's what I know about it for now and it works um, so I, I have a bunch of defines that set up the H bridge standby is on pin 3 pulse with modulation A is on 5 pulse with modulation B is on 6 A1 is 8 A or B1 is 7. So that sets up the entire H bridge and all four motors. We set all of those two outputs except for the echo pin, which is an input. Uh, we start up the serial monitor and we set the, we initialize the NeoPixel strip. And then I delay for five seconds. That's why the robot was delaying before he started moving. I kind of wanted to make sure you had enough time to get everything in place. Okay, so the main loop here 
First thing we do is we set all of the pixel lights to off. And then I call one function, obstacle course. And inside that obstacle course, we have a bunch of other functions. So I'll go through the, the main the, the functions of the robot, what the robot can do. The robot can go forward. He's going to move at, at half speed. We do that by putting A1 and B1 to high and standby to high. Okay. We set pulse of modulation A and B to 125. It's right around half the speed that it, it can go, which is fast enough. Uh, going in reverse, we bring him down to a quarter speed. We set A1 and B1 into low and we put standby to high. So you're getting power, but A and B are going to run in reverse, which is low. We turn left. We're using differential turning, much like a tank. Um, the pulse width modulation is going to be at a quarter. Um, for turning left, we put uh, A on low, B on high, and then we add power from standby. Um, to the right, we do just the opposite. A is going to be high, B is going to be low. And to stop, we put everything to zero, um, and then we put the standby to low. So here's the obstacle course. Now this, this was, I had to do this little trial and error here, you know. Um, I'll tell you what I had a problem with was um, getting the robot to acknowledge that he did something and move on to the next step. What was happening is he would scan to see if something was in front of him, and then if he seen it, then he would, uh, you know, do the first maneuver, and then he would jump back into basically going forward again, and then he would jump back into doing the first maneuver. So. What I had to do here was this. Um, basically, we have him ping, all right, and to see how far he is away at the very beginning, okay? Now, how we do this is we set the trigger to high. So we turn the trigger on. We wait a second. We set the trigger to low. We set the echo to high when we set the trigger to low, basically. So we turn the echo on. All right, that's... And, the duration is going to be equal to the pulse, the pulse and the echo. So we turn that on and we get the duration. So we calculate the distance by taking the duration, dividing that by two, taking that number, dividing it by 74, and we get inches. Okay, so we can determine how many inches away this robot is by doing that. Now you have to remember, this is sending out an ultra high frequency. Okay but the speed of sound is constant, okay? I believe it's 600 and something miles an hour. I used to be a pilot and I knew this, uh, but it, it escapes me right now. Just, it's over 600 miles an hour, we'll say that, okay? Okay, so the speed of sound, we, we, we can use the speed of sound as a unit of, me of measurement and get inches, okay? So that's that's what we do. And then we print it out on the, on the serial monitor. Now. I'm not going to show you the serial monitor because we've seen it in other things that I've done and it works. Okay, so the first thing we do is we use a while loop and we say while the distance is greater than four, we're going to move forward. And when we're moving forward, we're going to scan our distance. Okay, so if the distance goes to less than or equal to or less than four then he's going to do his first maneuver he's going to go left okay now he's going to scan again and then we jump into another while loop. this while now this was the secret of getting him to take the necessary steps he has to do in order to get from the, the beginning to the end if we didn't do these while loops it would have been really messed up this was what I learned from this experiment. Now we do the other while loop. And again, if the distance is greater than four inches, we're going to go forward. He's going to scan. If he finds out that the distance is equal to or less than four inches, he's going to go right this time. Then he's going to do another scan. And then we jump into another while loop. He's going to go forward. He's going to scan. If it's less than four inches, he's going to go right. So you kind of see the pattern here, okay? This is a pattern, it's a rhythm, it's an algorithm. It's like music. Okay, so then he's gonna jump into another loop. 
As long as he's above four inches, he's going to go forward. He's going to scan. If he starts to see something four inches or low, lower, he's going to go left. Okay. He's going to scan again. And this time, he's going to go forward again. All right. But once he reaches the end and it's less than four inches or four inches, I should say, he's going to do his victory dance because now we know he's in the right area where he's supposed to be at. So he's going to go left. He's going to go right. He's going to go left. Then he's going to blink his lights by going through this for loop. He's going to blink his light five times. And that's what all that is. And then he's going to stop. And on the serial monitor, it prints out you win. He's going to wait. 10 seconds and then he's going to do it all over again so that is the magic of mohawk basically and how it works um i plan on expanding this if i have the time i'll resubmit this because i want to have um multi-functionality to this robot i don't think i'm going to have enough time because it's already saturday this project is due sunday but if i can I'm going to implement where you can control the robot by yourself by using a touchpad, okay? And um, also, what we're going to be able to do is cycle through different modes. He's can, he can go through his obstacle course mode. He can go in the free mode where you can control him. Or he can go into this mode where he's going to try to maintain a straight line. And if you push him out of the way, he's going to try to come back to the same vector that he was he was going in. Um, am I going to be able to do it? It's a long shot. I have the code, um, but the problem is this. It's all about time, and I am really at the end here. So if I do, you'll get another update from me. If not, well, I think this is enough to demonstrate my skills, and I believe that I can, I, I can get an A out of this. Okay, guys. Anyway, thank you very much and have a wonderful day.